Oh, by the way, um, because, you know, I, you know I'm recording this and I really want to put it on YouTube. Do you mind if I do that? Oh, you're still recording. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, cool. First off, it was already bad. So I wasn't expecting anything. It's worse. It's worse? Oh, So. You would think they would learn. So when it closed in the West End. Yeah. Right, see. It had to. Because they were in debt. It was not making the money. the money that was put into it. So that's why he just all of a sudden ended it one night in a very unprofessional way. Yeah, it was I so unprofessional that. how he did that. I noticed that. Um, ugh, so I feel bad for the actors because it's not their fault. They did what their job required. Right. Um, so it ended. And then he decided to sell it here to America. And he revamped it. Oh, shit. He, and that's why, when he adjusted he the name charge, and everything. Why was he in charge of vamping it? He should have handed it to someone else. He needed to. It's even more disingenuous. Of course. So. I really liked our idea where we explain why she's upset. So she's yes. a pretty edgy girl. And, and to and have her, don't have her be that way from the beginning of the show. Because right. it leads to the thought, and this is where a lot of the reviews are. If Cinderella were this way, period, from the time stepmother and stepsister showed up in her life, she was disrespectful, outspoken, right. edgy, I'm emo, blah, blah, blah. Do we really care? care? No. Do we really feel bad? No. Do we really are, uh, you know, it, it becomes that uncomfortable situation that you look and go, okay, but she's unkind. Yeah. Like, you know. It's kind of sad, especially in today's toxic culture, where so many, especially, no offense, but to Americans, it's kind of our fault. Mm. But, but we're just so weirdly cringy. Yes. At least the Californians. Yes. At least the Californians. No, I would just say Americans. Yeah, Americans. <laughs> we're weirdly cringy. Weirdly and the cringy. ones who are with the brain, us, are here just, just lose this, like, shame. Just like, yeah, we deserve this. Well, we, we're not our fault, but anyway. But point is, is that it's like, it's like, we spoil our kids so much. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to provide. I'm not right, that. right. But there's a line between giving your children more opportunities and luxuries and, and teaching giving them, them everything and making them entitled. Right. But it's, it's so sad. So, and now you bring this set of entitlement and toxicity to a character of Cinderella. Right. What and, are we teaching our children audiences? Right. Well, and the problem is she's not, she's also not consistent. She's not. So opening number, and I think into the second number, because I have not been able to stomach listening to the whole soundtrack. Same. Especially the new version. Uh, you get through the opening number and you're like, okay, she's an angry individual. She's blah, blah, blah. Great. Okay. Cool. Justified. Her her mother died, then her father died, and now she's stuck with these people and blah blah blah. Absolutely, she'd be angry. She'd be pissed. Yeah. I love showing that side of Cinderella. Yeah, it's a sense. different side of her, you yeah, know. Instead of her being the kind, sweet person who just takes it, mm -hmm. which more often than not is actually what happens to right. abused people and people who have gone through a lot of loss, they do become the right. They're even more kind. They're even more mindful. So right. to me, that is more believable for Cinderella, yeah. like the Disney remake, the live action that I, I swear by that. and love. I love that so much. I know people are like, ah, but it was so this. And I'm like, you know what? Well, sit back, actually think about it. Right. Actually think about this young girl and the kind of family she grew up with and a mother who showed and lived kindness 24 seven in front of her daughter, right. led by example. Of right. course, her daughter's going to grow up and be kind. She's going to be considerate. But the problem is she is to her own detriment. And that's what the show touches on. Right. By how the fairy godmother speaks about her and to her and dialogue that comes up, you know, with the prince or with her friend and this kind of stuff that they're like, why are you saying you're keeping yourself in harm because you're being too kind, you're being too loving, you're thinking things are going to change in your situation, but they're not. These people are just cruel and unkind. Mm -hmm. It's great conversation to have, you know, with that version. Taking the side of, you know, that she's 
angry and she's lashing out. That does happen with some people. It That's does. That's why I liked um, Morgan and Disenchanted. Mm. Yes, because, yes. Know, yeah. Yeah, she's lashing out. It, it's those moments where she just doesn't know how to feel about it. She doesn't know what to think and, and what to do. And that wasn't right or wrong. Yeah, so for the opening number, at least from that standpoint of showing that side of Cinderella, I get it. But then all of a sudden she's home and her interactions are, they try to flip her then to the quiet, damaged, docile, whatever. And that confused me. And then they switch to she's so damaged inside and she's just wants to be da da da. And I'm like, Ugh. where did that, okay, I, you can turn it there, but and you need she, to transition it. Right, and then she flips right back to yeah. bad Cinderella and she's attitude and da 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 da. I'm like, there's no consistency with her throughout the show. And I, I don't understand. How do you t make us edgy Cinderella and make her much more of a sap yes. than the original? No, for real. How for, do you do that? For real. That's the problem. That's terrifying. She's on polar opposites of the spectrum yeah. through the whole show. And it makes it difficult for your audience to connect with her. We want to connect with bad Cinderella, sure. who's it's angry and yeah. who's dealing. We're like, ooh. Yeah, this could be a, a new way to do Cinderella. I wonder how she's going to react with the stepmother and stepsisters. I thought she would, like, when I first heard about it, I thought, like, maybe, you know, she acts docile, but she's all constantly doing pranks, or she, or the reason they are always looking so weird is because she's pulling pranks. Yes, like, like something. something. Just something. Like itchy powder or whatever. Yeah, change something. it up completely. Change it up. She, just change it. I would have liked... And I know it's completely taking the story on the other side, mm. but a, a deeper concept to it would be okay if you want to show that humans can take the opposite side of grief and abuse, that they become unkind and cold and turned off because they don't know how to, you know, mm. to deal with all the pain. They just become cold and emotionless. Yeah make her lash out all the time and she's constantly being brought home by the guards mm. to her stepmother and stepsisters because she was caught spray painting a statue again or tearing down a this again or doing this again blah 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 so then the stepmother is make the stepmother not cruel but make her Horrified for her daughter's safety. Like, confused and frustrated because she's trying to figure out how to at least be a decent stepmother to this girl. Oh. Okay, but yeah, she doesn't sense. know how because this girl is being unkind to her and is cold to her and closed off to her and da 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 da. You know, make the stepsisters brats. Keep yeah, that because it's a great dynamic. But then you have this kind of dynamic between Cinderella and the stepsisters mm -hmm. because stepmother knows Cinderella has issues so the stepsisters are going to play the sweet whatever to their mother mm -hmm. that they're innocent they didn't do it and, and blah 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 and they can easily blame it on Cinderella because Cinderella will take it because Cinderella doesn't give a shit instead she'd be like okay fine yeah I did put paint in their hair yep that was me mm -hmm. yep I thought you take the blame for all of it Make her a martyr. She's mm -hmm. making herself a martyr because she needs that fuel to justify why she's being a brat. Why she's lashing out so often. So then when the fairy godmother shows up, mm -hmm. you know, have it be, you know, there's an invite to the ball and, and the stepsisters are super excited, blah, blah, blah. And Cinderella just is not even interested at all. Mm -hmm. Flip it. She's not even interested. Mm -hmm. Stepmother asks her if she wants to go. Mm -hmm. She says, no, why would I want to go to something like that with you? Mm -hmm. And with them and blah, 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 blah. So she stays home. They leave. And then we see a different side of Cinderella when she's home alone because she's never home alone. Mm -hmm. And she pulls out a box from under the bed and it's her mother's picture and her father's picture or a last card from them or a last something for them. And then we see the underbelly of Cinderella and she falls apart because mm. she just misses them. And have it be a, not even about the ball, not even about anything. Have a song where she's walking through the house, which now looks completely different and sings about 
when her mother would walk out of her room in the morning, mm -hmm. when her father would come home through the front door. I love this front door because it's where I would meet my father every day. A beautiful, heartfelt song that we would go, oh my God, this is why she's angry. Right. This is why she's angry. And then ever walk through the house and I can get angry, yeah. have the song transition to anger about this new gaudy stuff and this and this, and have her trash the house. Mm -hmm. Just trash it. And maybe in trashing it, she pulls down a something and a box falls out. And it's something of her mother's that she left for Cinderella that she never found. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, blah, 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 or a this or a da, 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 da. Figure out a way to pull in the fairy godmother what if it, from the mother. I, I know, what if, what if it's an old dress of her mother's that she hasn't seen that she probably thought was lost or something in a way? Just sort of way, and out of nowhere, like a, like you know how they made the witch of oh, Oz and what the witch of was falling onto the floor instead mm. have a woman walk, come through the floor through the dress and be the fairy godmother. That could be very cool. Love that. So now all of a sudden the fairy godmother's there, and looks around the house and is like, well, "What did I miss?" That literally. Well, wow. I know I've been gone for a while, but like, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then they get to have a beautiful discussion about. That she was her mother's fairy godmother. She remembers her mother. Maybe she doesn't know that the mother has passed. That would be so sad. What a beautiful scene. Yeah. And now they Cinderella. Each other. Yeah. Now Cinderella has the choice to comfort her. This woman that she's never met, who doesn't know mm. like, that the mother has like, passed. The only, like, where's Gabriella? Where's yeah, Ella? You know, Gabriella. Yep. Where's she? You know, um, um, and you know, she did, and then she's. And then, of course, she falls to the floor, and she's like, oh, shoot. Yeah, and then she, you know, again, have her go angry in, in that moment at first, and be like, well, why are you weeping? Well, why do you get to weep? She was my mother. And then the fairy godmother just continues to weep. No words, just continues to weep. And it triggers that part of Cinderella that she's put away. Mm -hmm. And she does just sit next to her and try to comfort her, whatever. That's the moment the fairy godmother looks up and goes, there you go. Oh, shoot. There That's clever. And then they have the talk. And she says, you don't need to be here alone tonight. Last I checked, you had an invitation to go. You need to go. It'd be good for you. It'd be good for you to try something new. And she encourages her and, you know, finally convinces her to go. And she goes and gets Actually, there. Actually, um, I would thwart that a little bit. I would tweak that a little bit. Here's what I would do. I would, after she says, there you are, I would be nice. it would be nice to show a little more of the lore. Oh, fair gummy. You know, we met at the ball when she was kept coming out. She was, you know, like she was a sweet thing, you know, shy in the corner. We got to talk and she brightened up the room as soon as I got around Michelle. And, and and the more, you know, and you know, like a mother, like she's learning about more about her mother that she didn't know. And in turn getting transition that to get her to the ball, like, well, you know, like uh, you know, it was really nice, you should see this and there's that. There there's a fountain, there's a chocolate fountain or something, and there's like, well, why don't you go? And so you got an invitation and that's where you go. Because then it would still be for Cinderella and it would have more heart. Yeah. And she even, you know, <coughs> encourage her at the end what she has her in the dress and everything, and Cinderella's like, I don't know, I just feel stupid and whatever. Have the fair godmother pull out a spray paint can and go. If it starts going south in your board, cause some chaos. And then it'd be so nice if we, if, if then in the reveal she comes down and there's spray paint on her dress, which I thought that's what they were going to do. Me too. That's another thing they should have done. Yeah, because then she walked in in the bottom of spray paint on a thing, but kind of, kind of like a lord to like the ashes, like Cinderella cinders, except it's spray paint. And it would be like ash for you, <laughs> like, like something like a brand or something. I don't know. Just the brand, just have a fun gig, something like that. It was fun. Anyway, point is, it would just be nice to have some black, some pink, some purple, yeah, some just, yellow, whatever. Just gonna be punk, make a punk. And then just walk downstairs with Elgin, but still her. And she, and, and in turn, it would be so fun if there were some others like dressed like the traditional Cinderella and the Rogers and Hammerstein. Mm. And she walks in there, and it would be a nice homage at the same time. Yeah. And have the prince be in the same mindset she is with his life. I'm, I'm, I'm done and tired with the whole 
prince is complete opposite of Cinderella. Cinderella helps him change, or he helps her. Yeah, I didn't like that. I want, I want him to be the same way. Yeah. I want him to be at odds with his parents all the time because he's angry. Maybe his mother is a stepmother, and his mother died. Change it up. Do something. Something. You know, or that's his mother. It's a second king. <laughs> something. A step parent of his own, so that he's in the same place, and have him be angry as well. Personally, I would make it um, a stepfather because, you know, then he's like a king consort. Mm. And for a prince, I think, you know, he was very there for his father. And then for another man to genuinely want to be his, his father, but not take his father's place, I think that would be so beautiful. See, I think, I think this, yeah, this is, this is so much more potential. And you're still getting the same concept across. Right. Given how many divorced parents there are, how many were remarried, with and then and then like you know and then just just so many angles. Yeah, and then have the prince show up and he's wearing a uniform that he's not supposed to be wearing. Yeah. That wasn't picked out for him, because he likes to break the rules and not follow whatever. So as soon as she would see him across the room, she'd go. That's the maker. prince. <laughs> and he'd see her and absolutely pick her yeah. to dance with. And then their like dialogue would be, her, yeah. yeah, their dialogue would be fun on the ballroom. He'd be like, what would you do with your dress? And she'd be like, hmm, matching uniform? You know, <laughs> that they're like talking about the fact that neither of them is following the normal standard or and whatever. And then it'll be funny. And then why don't, like, and then, I mean, this will be crazy. If done wrong, which it very easily could be. But, 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 I mean, it would be fascinating if then all of a sudden... She became like started dancing like a prince, and he started dancing like a woman. Like oh, you know, like absolutely pretending. something, something make they a ruckus. Talk about the spray paint, and yeah. he he could reveal that he's been following this vandal that's been doing all this stuff for the last handful of months, and he look is like, I'm gonna guess it's you. Right. And she's like, Well, what are you gonna do about it? And and have, and you know him as. Well, why did you come tonight? This isn't your kind of thing. Uh, well, you know, I was thinking about just dumping paint on everyone's dresses and him going, there's still time. You got paint? <laughs> and then we get that homage of him dancing with girls and, and flirting with them and then she's breaking in the back. Yes. So Actually do it. Have them cause trouble at the ball. And then the, when they hear screams and ruckuses and everything, they run out to the garden. Yes, so that they're away from everyone laughing about what they just did and right. connecting as friends. Yes. And, la and, ta and then they have a moment where, you know, yeah. she asks, you know, why, why, why do you hate your parents so much? Why are you talking about them so much? Da -da? And he gets to talk about the stepfather. And she talks about her stepmother. Mm -hmm. And they, the more they talk about it, they have the realization of, oh, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't sound that terrible. Yeah. I guess... This is not too bad. And then instead of fleeing because the magic is over at midnight, the ball ends and she remembers she trashed the house. Oh, shit. Yeah. And so she leaves that to try sense. to clean up the house. Mm. And she doesn't get there in time. And when she gets there, the stepmother is crying in the center of the house because all of her stuff is trashed. Oh. And she worries because Cinderella isn't there that she was taken or hurt. And Cinderella walks in, and instead of her being angry, Cinder, you know, Cinderella first goes off, and yes, it was me, and I blah, 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 and all the stepmother does is grab her and hold her. Yeah. It's like, I couldn't find you. I was so scared something happened to you. This is stuff. Right, I don't I thought, care about I thought, this I stuff. I thought we were broken in. I thought you were yes. taken. Yes, yes. Like, anything can happen to a girl, you know? Yes. Okay. And then Cinderella can't take it and pushes her off, runs out of the house, runs into the forest, dress is being shredded by trees, blah, 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 falls down, doesn't know what to think. Mm. The moment to have the big song for oh, Cinderella, yeah. right there. Between and then her and the, and the, the fair godmother shows up. Yeah. After she sings the big song. I still want to do what we kind of so talked about earlier. Why are you so blah, 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 you know? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> between, like, between the prince and his mother, or I guess in this one, it would be probably the prince and father. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just a monster of different sequences. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I really liked that so much from our other conversation. I want to keep that so bad. Yes. So that becomes the song. Don't just give the big song to Cinderella. Give it to all four of them. Right. All four of them. 
having a realization on their own, mm -hmm. speaking what they're actually thinking on their own. I am curious now because you're so smart at this. Um, because I love it. You're so good. You're so right. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but um, how would you handle the stepsisters by this point then? So I do like, if you're going to do like with a story like this, where we are, you know, painting them to be manipulators. Mm. Manipulators don't change really. Yeah. But what you can do at least is have it be a, um, bring an end to the manipulation. Mm. So, you know, and it could be done in that scene in the house where the stepmother is weeping and as soon as Cinderella gets there, the stepsisters start blaming her and screaming at her and have the fight be between them, oh. build lots of tension. You know, you're trash, mother should have thrown you out earlier because, think about it, now the stepmother is seeing the true them in that moment. Oh, yeah. Because through the whole show, we hid that. So she's now seeing this. And for her to not even try to break up the fight, but instead to run and just embrace Cinderella, mm -hmm. it's going to piss the sisters off. Mm -hmm. You're like, Mother, what are you doing? Why are you blah, 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 blah. And she pays no mind to them and just focuses on Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because any parent, any parent who goes about biology is going to say, I love you, you're my child. Yes. <laughs> so then during the redemption song, you know, as Cinderella flees that scene and leaves and whatever, don't show what happens between the stepmother and stepsisters. During the redemption part of the song, have the stepmother, you know, just be walking through the trashed house while singing her part of that quartet. And I mean, depending on how old you make the stepsisters, I don't make them the same age, but have them packing and leaving. Whoa, really? Have uh, you know, there could be an uncle character earlier in the show because I always like when you pull in more family for the stepmother because otherwise you're like, where's their family? Right. Like, where's her parents? Where's her whatever? Have her mother be part of it mm -hmm. earlier in the show and have her mother be a strict biddy. Loves her daughter, but mm -hmm. strict, way more strict than she is. Mm -hmm. During that song, have the daughters come down from their room with packed bags and the mother meets them. She's going to take them in and take them for a while because that's what they need. They need strictness because that would represent that the stepmother has realized her version of soft parenting to her daughters mm -hmm. has done more damage than good. Oh. And she's changing that. And that could be part of her lyrics in there. That makes sense. That I she, thought it was going a different direction. No, that she thought she knew what love required or how to, you know, whatever I came into and she could reference, uh, I think all four of them should be referencing damage and that's mm -hmm. what the song is about. And she references a damaged home, the physical, mm -hmm. that it now, this, this house always looked this way from the time I entered. Mm -hmm. It was a damaged home. No wallpaper on the walls and, you know, ash on the carpets and that kind of stuff representing Cinderella was damaged mm -hmm. when she came in and she did nothing to address the damage or try to help her heal through the damage and hold her hand through the damage. She just expected them all to, yeah. you know, new color on the walls, new gold linens, new this and that to because, try to cover it's, up it's the damage. It's fair enough because like, from, that's what, um, from like, like they, you walk in, you see a sad child, you don't want to cheer them up, but that's misdirected and miscommunicated. Yes. Like, you're like, oh, yes. let's get you a new dress. Let's, 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 and, and they might perceive that as you changing things. Yes. So her side of damage, now I want to write this song. Her yeah, side please of do it. <laughs> damage would be about the house and the family that she came into. Mm -hmm. Cinderella's damage would be her. Mm -hmm. She's damaged. She feels damaged. That's been the problem is her mindset was she thought she was. You know, at fault and the problem we always do when we lose people, you know, what could I have done better or different or whatever, it doesn't matter what age we were, we still think those thoughts, you know, and the prince could be singing almost the same words that Cinderella is, and that's where the duet of it comes from, because he feels the same way about losing his father. What could I have done differently? Could I have blah, blah, blah? Could we have gotten physicians there faster or whatever? And then the, you know, stepfather singing about to mirror her, a damaged home, a damaged castle, the parapets falling and the tapestries burned and blah, blah, blah. What and a you know, beautiful... Very interesting about 
revealed to be like him. Like, I didn't want to be a King Kong, so I hate the pig. Yes. And yes. that would be a great realization for him to bond with his new son. Like, yes. But he came in trying to be the father figure he thought he needed. Because yes. that's what society says. Like, you gotta step up. You gotta... But there doesn't mean one way. No, you're thinking deep writing. Thank you. Yes. I just woke up, okay? Because that balances... My brain just woke up, okay? The stepmother. And that concept for her. Yeah. She was coming in and trying to be what society at that time says a mother should do. Like loving and daring yes. and fashion. Da, 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 yes. Instead of sitting down mm -hmm. and looking at the child and says, hey, what can I do for you? Yes. And what a beautiful sequence that would be. And then the fairy godmother shows up in the forest with Cinderella. She's weeping there alone. Mm -hmm. And they can have a beautiful dialogue. And... You know what? Can I can I say one more thing? For the fair godmother, again, I always love to have a comparison, a balance. That's what I love is like what if you know nice if you know, she's crying and then she kind of asks, like, you know, why aren't you angry? You just found out she's dead. Mm. And I think it would be a very, very wise, very mature moment for her to say, I am angry. I am sad. But that does not but I don't have to let that define. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be sad, but I'm going to take it one step at a time. What's another way she could take that dialogue in reference to, I love that you wanted to go there with her, that she says, I am angry. Yeah, I am. Reference the house, though. Oh. What could she say to Cinderella about anger? Well. And the choice to just only get angry about that grief and everything. Well, I am angry, but um, I'm not gonna work house. What good would that do? There it is. And what good would it do? How would she keep going? You know, I could, I could take, and then I guess she, I, I mean, this is me talking, but I mean, I would, if I, I, I love silly, you know, like, silly kooky ladies, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But it'd be so fun, but well, I could take a spray paint, and I could maybe not spray paint guest butt to a chair, but like, I would probably go out and make an art. Like, I, was, I would take that anger and make a masterpiece on the wall. You yeah. just gave me a great idea with going on that trail. Okay, okay. <laughs> a great idea with going on that trail. Oh, God, now I want to write this version of Cinderella. Why don't you? Credit me. Damn. We got you so, now. We're too smart what for a, We are too smart for <laughs> What a beautiful concept mm. for the fairy godmother. Cinderella, how can you not be angry? How can you not whatever? And for the fairy godmother to go, of course I'm angry. I feel nothing but it. Where do you think magic comes from? True, emotion. Change comes from anger. Mm -hmm. She says, you know, you decided to use anger as a weapon and spray paint a statue and destroy someone's art. Mm -hmm. I created this out of anger. Mm -hmm. Anger that you had nothing. Anger that your mother did not have the means to wear a beautiful gown and go to a ball, mm -hmm. to have her hair done pretty and known in her life. It was anger that brought me to your mother. It was anger that fueled my magic and created the most beautiful dress because I was angry that That's she so could not. Idea. <laughs> but that was your idea. Oh. You were going there with, instead of using anger, anger to destroy, use it for art. Level that up. Instead of using it to destroy, use it to create. Use it to make. You tore down a house, magic would build it back up. But it's still out of anger. Mm -hmm. Anger that you tore it down. What a great sequence. And here's, we, we gotta be adding here. Anger with wisdom, though. Because, because the, very, the stepmother, sorry, the stepmother did try to build it, but not without proper wisdom to it. It was blind. Right. It was blind. To and the that... Concept. So then that would be the conversation when she comes to her in the woods after the big song that mm -hmm. Cinderella goes, I don't, I don't understand. You said that anger could create, that anger could build back up, but all my anger has done is destroy it more. Mm -hmm. It's cost the kingdom money and the king is feeling that. And maybe that was part of the prince's conversation, you know, that, that they're, running out of some funds because they've had to replace mm. a fountain and a statue and a this and a building that was set on fire by Cinderella and a this <laughs> and a blah, you know? Yeah. And for her to have to face that realization of her anger has cost people emotional damage. 
damage. Damage to her stepmother and stepsisters. Economic damage. And economic damage. Which you definitely speak volumes to today. Yes. And then the fairy godmother to, you know, speak at her because you have no wisdom. Anger requires wisdom to know what to do with it. And then she could, you know, it could be a really cool sequence and there are many ways you could do it on stage where she shows what her magic is capable of if she doesn't pair it with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Have her set a freaking tree on fire. Mm -hmm. This is what my anger wants to do. Maybe she sets the whole forest on fire around them. The visual effects, I can yes, see it. to where it scares Cinderella. Right. Oh my God, put it out. Please put it out. Put it out. Why? I'm angry. Shouldn't I be angry? Have her dress change. Have her go dark. Have her go whatever to where you realize that's what's inside that beautiful fairy all the time. And she just lets it go. And then Cinderella has a, you know, finally screams or says something, begs please. And then all at once it all goes away. And she goes back to normal. And she says, that's what anger does. Your anger is a wildfire, and it's justified. But why would you just let it burn? All it's doing is destroying everything around you. Why would I let it burn when all I would do is destroy this beautiful forest and this beautiful world and beautiful people around me? It's with wisdom that I know how to channel that fire and turn it into a glass slipper. A pumpkin into a carriage. A pumpkin into a carriage. You know, uh, what a beautiful, beautiful lesson. A completely different lesson than normal Cinderella shows. Yeah. This one would deal with, how do you deal with anger? What do you do with anger? And grief and loss. And, and then and and broken homes. Yes. Oh, we gotta make this show now. It'd be so beautiful. And then they have a beautiful moment together and Cinderella realizes what she needs to do and she runs home and in the middle of the night while the stepmother is asleep she fixes the house mm -hmm. as much as she can as much as she can you know and the stepmother wakes up in the morning and cinderella is down there and again she runs to her and hugs her without realizing the house is fixed and cinderella's like you know look what i did i fixed the house or whatever and she still goes i don't care i love that you would do this for me but this is not the point this has never been the point Again, she's being a good mother. She is a good mother. And Cinderella would finally have that realization with her. And an apology. Da, 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 da. Then the prince finally shows up at the doorstep. You know, but for different reasons, maybe. Right. Maybe Cinderella's going to be arrested. Because it came out who's been doing all of the... Oh, yeah. You know, whatever. And the stepmother is trying to defend her. And she says, no, I need to go. And so she goes, and she faces the king and the queen, and the prince is there. Can it be in the town spirit in front of the statue? There we go. Yeah. And she admits to all of it and apologizes to everyone in the town, everyone that had anything done, and apologizes to the king and the queen, and apologizes for this and says, I will, I will work for years. Right. I will help rebuild your home. I will help redo this. I will help do this. Really I will nice help build this. Like if the down. Or make it a bank. Yeah, okay. And that the reason sense. she burned down the bank is the bank denied her father after the mother died money. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. To help with... So that's why she set it on fire. Yeah. She just... Well, oh, you no didn't help me, so I'm crisis. against you. Yes. So now there's money literally missing. Right. And what a beautiful... She has to face what she did, mm -hmm. and she's going to, and she's willing to, and she's willing to help rebuild things. You're um, so smart than me. Mm -hmm. And then the end is not about, oh, redemption and love, and everything's wonderful. No, it's, it's, it's about going to build. Rebuilding. Foundation. Yes. You can't rebuild without foundation. Yes. That's one thing yep. I feel. Society always preaches, but never really quite puts into action. Yes. And have the prince then instead their whole, they're together now at the end. Instead is he offers to help as well. Right. It would I be a like community service. Like yes. she's helping. And you know, and of course, you know, you know they're probably going to end up together, obviously. Yes. But the thing is, it starts from a place of friendship and, and understanding and partnership. Because then, and then also gives, you know, girls like, oh my gosh, she's not with the prince for love. She's with the prince because she's working with him as her own. Yes. 
Okay, okay, we just, this needs, this needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We need to save Cinderella, oh my god. Anyway, by the way, again, I cannot, I cannot understand that Cinderella at all. But people, like, I, I only got a few comments, but some commenters were just like saying, Oh my gosh, you're gonna make a series? And I just said, no. <laughs> and I'm so mad I never made a video. I'm glad I kept the comment that I said that, so at least that's the only proof I have that I knew this was a bad show. But it's like, but it's like, I'm so mad I never made a video saying it was bad. And for, because when it's closed, I'm like, I should have said it, that's all I can say, I told you so. With Bad Cinderella, there have been a lot of videos surfacing of people actually walking out during the show Good. on Broadway. Good. Which, I'm here or there with that. We want you Obviously, theater. good theater etiquette is you wait for intermission. Yeah. And then you leave. I don't care how horrible the show is. Now, if the show is horribly offensive that makes sense for just the sake of being offensive you can walk out at any time that yeah. is your right yeah that is your absolute right because theater is not meant to be offensive for offensive sake yeah. theater is meant to make points Tell so if, if yes so if it's there's dialogue that that is offensive because they're offending the character in the show mm -hmm. for a reason love it Love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I love those kinds of shows. I mean, you challenge you us. Challenge us. Yeah. Make us feel, ugh, God, I hate that character. Make us feel that. Because right. it's what you're trying to do. Don't just offend your audience. Right. I you guess know? that's why people love this song. Because he's offensive, to oh, be offensive for a good reason. Fully, and it works. So, that Cinderella is not offensive. No. Is it... Trash, what I'm, <laughs> from what I'm hearing of the actual full performance, because again, I haven't seen the full performance, I just know the soundtrack and the plot and everything. Yes, it's trash. Yeah. Everyone is saying it. Yeah. Everyone is saying it. It's just getting horrible reviews. Yeah. I mean, for people to literally be walking out of a Broadway show, that's not good. Especially um, with those tickets. That's Sheesh, a the bad, person. yeah, that's a bad sign of your show. But I do wish that those people would wait for intermission. And just they probably don't back. know that. Because, you know, culture-wise, people... It's probably and that's fair. Yeah. And that's fair. A lot of people probably don't. Um, you know, I... Do they have a right, though, to walk out of a theater if they're not enjoying the show and they view it as a waste of money? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a choice. Absolutely. So, you know, I've also seen videos of people should not be walking out. That's so disrespectful. Blah, blah, blah. You paid the ticket. I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. They paid the ticket. Right. If they don't want to stay, they don't have to stay. They already have their money. Right. So let them walk out. If they're not enjoying what they spent good, hard-earned money on, right. they don't have to stay. That's how theater works. You know, it's like you order, you go to a fancy restaurant and order a dinner and you just spent $56 oh, on yeah. a plate of food and it comes out and it's completely raw. Yeah. You have the right to send it back to the, the kitchen chef, right? and say, this is literally not cooked. Right. You have that right. Why? Because you paid $56 for right. that plate. Right. Right. You have the right. Right. Do you have the right to be super picky and go, no. oh, I know this is disgusting. Made me wait half of it. Right. People that go to see a show and sit through the whole show because we've had this happen with some of our shows and they sit through the whole show and just uh, 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 all the way through the show that, that is, that's, that's disrespectful that, that's disrespectful, that's disrespectful. I always walking bad out for, I would prefer you walk out I've always wanted <laughs> for performers when when for performers because it's not their fault they're Hello. just performing yeah we're doing the best we can yeah, because here's the thing, you know Saigon when it first mm -hmm. came out and um and the guy who played um engineer. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't know it took me a long, stupid long while. But it took me a long while to realize he was written to be breed himself, that he was that determined thing. Yeah. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But it just but I think a lot of people else didn't realize that. So when people heard, you know, saw the actor play engineer, they got angry. And I understand because the writing isn't that clear, and the writing little and given the whole circumstances, makes sense that engineer would be Asian in general. Right. So I I would not make him a half breed. I don't know why I'm saying that. But that's what they say a lot in the show. But I would but make him just 
you know, Asia, but I felt so bad for the actor because he was in all the heat. And I'm like, yes. he's just doing his job. Yes. That's the casting we, director's Yes, fault. we have to stop in theater blaming actors for being cast in roles. Right. It's not their fault they were cast in the role. If you think it's offensive that they got cast in the role, attack the director, attack the casting director. But Leave not, the yeah. poor actor alone. Right. And you know, here's my thing. You know, I think, I'm sorry, I gotta go further. Is I'm so angry about theater. And I feel like so there's a disconnect between this and at least in the U.S. laws. Mm. I feel like it's universal in other English, at least other English countries. But I hate how there are laws protecting us from our ethnicity to be used against us. Mm. So, so I'm so I mean, unless it's like the color purple, and, and that's why I hate when people wear hang on Hamilton. It's like it's like you being born black and coming a theater major and going and getting a job and playing Washington should not hinder you from playing Washington. Right. Like, there's laws protecting you, like, for, let's like, say you're Hispanic and you walk in and want to be an intern for a law firm. That should not stop, hinder you between you and another white, that guy named from, who's Irish descent. Right. Does that make him more qualified? No. Just like, it's just, it's just like, right. what's the heck? Exactly. And, and, you know, um, the flip side of that is, and we've had to get in some people's faces before with some of our casting, some of our shows. Oh, it was then Spicy Sorry? Where they're like, yeah, where they're like, you know, that person's not even, you know, the ethnicity that they're supposed to be in the show. And we look at them and go, then how about you audition next time? Right. Stop complaining that the person who was cast doesn't look the way you you think they should look you're like they're not the actual they're not my nationality and that role supposed to be then audition next time because maybe we didn't have anyone of that ethnicity show up to auditions even though we advertised for it if you knew auditions were happening and you knew the show was happening obviously because you came to see it right so you knew it was going to happen why didn't you show up to audition we can only cast who shows up we can only cast who shows up even broadway there are times where certain roles are, you know, generally or traditionally cast a certain color. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to auditions, people of that color did not audition. Or the few that did were not good enough. Right. They just, they're good for this part and they just don't want good for the show at all. You know, everyone has their strengths. You can't, you can't cast what's not there. Right. And that's where we were with West Side Story. It's where we were with a few other roles here and there. And we were like, look... You didn't show up. Show up. Right. If you want more of people like you represented, then get people like you to audition. Right. You show up. Stop standing on the outside screaming that we never cast anyone that looks like you when you've never auditioned. Right. Shut up. Right. <laughs> Shut up. It's so dumb. Again, they got to show up. Yeah. I'm trying. I mean, that's, that's just reality. <laughs> Wait for me, world. I'm trying. <laughs> right? Right. Oh my god, I don't understand it. How do you, how do, how do people complain about a character for years and years and years about being, like, you know, docile mm -hmm. and make her worse? Yep. How do you do that? Yep. It's like, she's like, how did, it's so bad when your own freaking the villain, like, stepsister comes to you and just begs you to just win. Do you know how sad and pathetic that is? I'm like, what am I listening to?